So guys what if Eno and Naruto dating secretly and few days secretly cute baby movie. It all started one sunny afternoon at training ground 34, Eno had been training herself hard, trying to improve her to just do skills against one of the many old logs that had been planted in the ground, her long legs crashing into the wood as her sweat covered body spun and twirled around the training log, she'd been so intent on her training that she'd missed the small, loose rock that was under her foot as she spun, causing her LG to go out from under her and her ankle to twist, she cried out in surprise and pain as she hit the ground ground, her long blonde hair falling over her beautiful features as she collapsed, normally, this wouldn't have been a problem, but she'd been restricted from using her chakra for the next month to let herself heal from an injury to her chakra network. Slowly, she sat up and tenderly probed her ankle with her fingers, whimpering slightly at the pain that flashed through her, great, she muttered, shifting so she could lean against the training post, she was tired, sweaty, and now she was hurt with no way to get back to her home on the other side of the village, it was too much, the stress of the last few months of seeming failures and disappointments, and she felt tears well up in her cornflower blue eyes. For some strange reason, she was suddenly embarrassed at her sweaty, disheveled state. She always took such pride in her appearance, never seeing why she couldn't be pretty and strong, and now it suddenly seemed so funny, so ridiculous, to think she could be both. She might be pretty, beautiful even, but she was never going to be strong. Tears fell down her cheeks as she drew her uninjured left leg up to her chest and rested her forehead on her knee. Fate was so cruel to let the pink-haired little girl she'd saved so many years ago surpass her. Maybe I should just stick to arrange flowers and give up being a ninja, she whispered, squeezing her eyes shut. But fate wasn't done with her yet, even as Eno relaxed enough to let herself cry in peace. She was interrupted by the only person people considered more annoying than herself, Naruto Uzumaki, the legendary prankster and dead last of their year at the academy, came strolling into her training ground, talking to a dark orange toad perched on his shoulder, Oi, Eno-san, what are you doing out here? Naruto called as he made his way over to her. Eno bit back her tears, determined not to show anyone what she was feeling, what does it look like I'm doing Baka? She snarled, her blue eyes flashing with emotion. It was something that normally had her teammates cowering in fear, but the loud young man standing in front of her didn't seem to notice, scratching the back of his head. He looked down at her curiously, well, the kinda looks like you're sitting on that cute little ass of yours, Eno-san, he said calmly, causing the toad on his shoulder to cower at the girl's angry gaze. Um, boss, I don't think you should have mentioned her ass. The toad shouted as Eno stood up, ready to hit the obnoxious guy for even daring to mention that part of her, stupid perverts, all they ever see is my ass or tits. She stormed mentally, only to fall when her ankle gave out, crying out in pain as she did, the next thing she knew, she was stopped by Naruto as he grabbed under her arms and pulled upwards, causing her to crash into him as they fell onto his back, Eno grunted as they landed, forcefully realizing that the young man underneath her was made of nothing if not solid muscle, her ample breasts were crushed against his chest as her legs played on either side of his hips, she stared into his eyes as he shook himself free of the effects of their fall noticing just how blue they were. For a moment she was about to thank him for saving her when she grew aware of just how intimately they were placed, her body pressing against his, and she could feel everything pressing against her, a twitch of something pressing against her made her see red, and she shoved herself into a seated position, slamming a punch into Naruto's face, pervert. She screamed, inadvertently pressing herself against the very thing that had offended her. Her ankle twinged at that moment, causing her to cry out in pain, along with the young man underneath her. Damn it, what the hell did you do that for? Naruto shouted at her, rubbing his cheek as he glared up at her, Eno felt her nerves fraying by the second, the pain in her ankle, and the emotion she'd been feeling just then taking hold of her mind, what do you think you pervert, for making me fall on you so you could molest me? She snarled, tears welling up in her eyes as she tried to force her ankle to let her stand, Naruto glared at her for a moment, the glance down at where she was sitting, straddling his hips and blushed, Eno felt another twitch underneath her ass, although this was much larger than before, causing her eyes to widen and a crimson blush to spread across her features. Despite what the jealous village girl said, Eno wasn't a slut, in fact, she'd only been kissed twice in her life and had never even had a serious boyfriend, but she knew enough about male anatomy from her lessons at the academy and various other sources to know what was was pressing against her, and enough to guess he was slightly larger than average. All that flashed through her mind in the space of the few seconds before she screamed and launched another fist at Naruto's head, the blonde young man dodged the punch, what the hell is your problem Eno? He yelled, grabbing her wrist as she pulled her hand back, what's my problem? What's my problem? My problem is you dragging me on top of you because you think I'm some empty-headed bimbo slut like everyone else. She screamed, tears flying from her eyes as she jerked her hand away and punched wildly at him, she felt him wiggling around to dodge her blows, causing the offending appendage to rub through the fabric of his orange and black pants that were pressed against her panties, her short violet skirt ridding up in their struggles, what? Naruto yelled as he grabbed her wrists and refused to let go, who told you that? 
he asked softly, sitting up slightly and crossing his legs underneath her, Eno felt the front of her skirt ride up further, revealing the black spandex boy short she was wearing underneath, Eno bowed her head, refusing to look at him, refusing to admit who had told her the rumors, who had spread them since three years ago, tears fell down her cheeks, and she felt Naruto shift his grip, so that he was holding her wrists with one hand, while gently lifting her chin with the other, she could still feel him pressing against her, but she didn't say anything about it, hey, Eno, you still with me? Naruto whispered, trying to look into her eyes, Ino jerked her head from his gentle hold and looked away, Ka can you just take me home please, she asked softly, I twisted my ankle just before you got here, Naruto looked at her, and Ino blushed under his gaze, sure, as long as you promise not to hit me again, he said with a grin, rubbing the back of his head while still holding her wrists, Ino looked at him through teary eyes and nodded, okay, I promise not to hit you, as long as you don't treat me like some easy slut, she whispered, causing Naruto to nod and let go of her hands, Naruto placed his hands under her legs and set her down gently as he uncrossed his own limbs and eased out from under her, then he turned around and knelt on the ground right in front of her, his head twisted around and he grinned at her foxily, so Eno, how long has it been since you rode piggyback? He asked with a laugh, causing Eno to blush as she leaned forwards and wrapped her arms around his neck and her legs around his waist, she gasped and blushed as she felt Naruto place his hands under her ass and stand, letting his hand slide down her thighs a little to hold her safely, she slapped at his head, boy, what was that for? Naruto yelped as he jerked his head away from her hand, for grabbing my ass, you promised not to be a pervert. Ino said hotly, tears welling up in her eyes as she realized that everyone must view her according to the rumors, if this dense guy was treating her like this, oi, I was just trying to pick you up, why the hell would I want to grab your ass, you're way too violent. Naruto said hotly as he started walking, her 5 foot 5 body seeming to weigh nothing to him, Ino blushed hotly and buried her crimson face in his shoulder, she didn't know what was worse, being viewed as a slut or being viewed as unattractive, she spent so much time trying to be pretty that it hurt think someone would consider her ugly, I'm sorry sensei, but I don't think I can keep my promise she thought to herself, painfully remembering her sensei's last words, asking her to never lose to her rival at ninjutsu or love, it was all her rival's fault anyway, she felt something land on her head and was startled to hear a voice coming from there, hey boss, I think you might want to apologize before she gets mad again, the voice said, and Ino recognized it as the toad that had been on Naruto's shoulder earlier, normally she would have freaked at having a frog on her hair, but she was too tired and worn out to bother, hey, why would I need to apologize? Naruto asked blankly as they exited the training area, adjusting his grip on her legs, Ino heard the toad sigh and heard a wet slapping sound, because you just called her ugly, Dumbus. The toad shouted, oi, I didn't call Ino ugly, I just said she was too violent, Naruto protested, that's the point idiot. You don't tell a girl that there's something bad about her, true or not. The toad shouted and Ino heard another slapping sound, only this time Naruto protested. They walked silently for several long minutes before Naruto shook her lightly, hey Ino, I'm sorry for calling you violent, Naruto said softly, honestly, I think you'd be really beautiful if would just calm down some and not let your temper get a hold of you all the time. Ino's head jerked up, causing the toad on top of her head to yell as it tried to stay on its perch, she didn't know if she should be touched or angry, but after the day she'd been having, she decided that it was better to go with the former emotion, plus, she could really use someone making her feel like something other than a complete failure, you, you really think so? She asked, wondering why she cared about his opinion, but, she realized, he was a far cry from the geeky dead last student he'd been almost four years ago, she'd felt the difference training with one of the legendary Sanin had done to his body, and she'd seen with her own eyes what he'd done to the ninja that had helped kill her sensei, he was strong and kind from what she'd heard, and suddenly she found his next words meant more to her than anything else, Naruto looked back at her, his eyes closed and as he thought, well, yeah, I mean that you're really beautiful and hot already, but if you didn't get angry all the time you'd probably be the best ever. He said happily, his closed eyes curving with his grin. Ino felt herself blush at being called beautiful, at someone finally saying something about that wasn't negative, even her teammate said she was troublesome, she buried her face into his back as the tears welled up again and muttered a muffled thank you, Naruto laughed as he bounced her lightly, you're such a spaz, Ino. He said with a laugh, Ino jerked her head up, causing the toad to fall with a cry, shut up blondie. You have no room to talk. She whimpered tearfully, causing him to laugh again, well, maybe not, but I still think it's cute, he said cheerfully, causing her to blush harder, they walked on in silence, the toad hopping up to rest on Naruto's shoulder, hey, you wanna grab some Raymond? Naruto asked as they entered the residential area of Konoha, Ino lifted her head off his shoulder and noticed everyone was staring at them, some with rather hostile glares and others with smug looks of superiority, she knew some of those looks were directed at her, but wondered if they were directed towards Naruto because of her or some other reason, um, are you sure, you do know my current reputation right? Ino asked softly, unsure if this was a trap being played on her by her rival or not, eh, what reputation is that? 
Naruto asked, giving her a blank look as if she didn't know what she was talking about, Ino blushed hotly, first in anger and then embarrassment, as she realized he really didn't have a clue, I, that is, she started, not meeting his kind gaze, someone who I used to think was my friend started telling everyone I was a slut, that I'd take anyone who propositioned me the right way. She hissed, Naruto's eyes closed in thought as they kept walking, well, are you a slut? He asked cluelessly, causing the toad to slap its forehead and Eno to growl, as her face turned a brighter shade of red, no, god damn it, I'm not. She hissed, Naruto nodded, ignoring how angry she seemed, okay, cool, he said calmly, before turning to look forwards, what is a slut anyway? He asked, causing Eno drop her head onto his shoulder with a sigh and the toad to fall to the ground, you really are a clueless idiot, aren't you? Eno asked softly with a groan, oi, there's no need to insult me, Naruto grumbled as they ignored the look sent their way, just because I don't know what everything is doesn't mean I'm stupid, he continued, pushing off the ground and landing on one of the many roofs that lined the busy street, Eno looked at the back of his neck and blushed, sorry, I didn't mean it like that, she whispered against the blonde hairs, noticing how coarse they were, so different from her silky locks, it was still soft though, where it had brushed her cheek just a moment ago, well, as long as you're sorry, that's okay then, Naruto said happily, his his eyes closing with his smile, Ino wondered what in the world could cause him to be so forgiving, but considering Sakura was his teammate, she guessed it was only natural. He chased after the pink-haired girl for so long and been rejected so many times that it must have just evolved in him to accept when someone got angry with him and forgive everything. Ino suddenly felt horrible for him. People should get mad at others when they were mistreated too much, not just forgive and forget. It wasn't healthy. They walked on in silence for a long moment, Naruto humming tunelessly and Ino resting her head on his shoulder. My house is just over here. Do you want to stop? by and let me treat your ankle. Naruto asked quietly, as if afraid to break the awkward silence that held them, Ino felt herself falling back into the depression from earlier, yeah, sure, she replied, closing her eyes and burying her face in his shoulder. She felt the fabric under her skin growing wet and prayed her savior wouldn't notice, but it seemed that even an oblivious idiot notices a woman when she cries on his shoulder. She was sobbing by the time he set her down on the rooftop and peeled her delicate bruised hands away from her eyes and knelt between her legs, giving her a worried look that drenched her heart, Ino, are you okay? Did I hurt you? Naruto asked, his voice growing tight with worry, Ino shook her head, her long hair snapping with the force of her movements. Ino wasn't sure why she did what she did, but she grabbed his stupid black and orange jacket that made him look so big and strong and pulled herself against him, crying her heart out. She heard Naruto mumbling to himself, trying to figure out what to do, before his strong arms wrapped around her and held her, H how can you be be so and nice tt to me? She asked brokenly, sobs racking her body, I hardly know you, I've been nothing but mean when I'm around you, all my other so-called friends avoid me now, she sobbed, her light makeup running with her tears, it was probably staining his clothes, even the person I thought was my best friend tells everyone I'm a slut. She cried, tears falling harder as Naruto held her close. She felt Naruto stiffen and froze herself. Ino couldn't believe she'd let that slip out. She was so stupid. Now he'd leave her after bawling her out for daring to say anything bad about his beloved Sakura. She felt him pull back and she sobbed even harder. She should just end it anyway. There was never a chance of someone liking and respecting her ever again. Even someone as dense as Naruto. Sure he was an idiot, but it would have been nice to have him be her idiot. To have the same level of blind devotion from someone that Sakura seemed to get from everyone. And she felt Naruto's large, gentle, strong head pulling her face up, and his dark blue eyes stared deep into her own pale blue orbs. He was silent, and Ino felt herself crumbling even more, knowing he was seeing her as ugly, horrible Ino that no one liked, who was only good for laying on her back and spreading her legs, who could only get missions done and receive promotions because she was a good lay and had big breasts. It didn't matter that the number of guys she'd slept with could be counted with one finger, or that the number of times was the same, it had been foolish and stupid, and she'd regretted it almost from the moment it happened but Sakura still used it against her because it had been with a man the pink-haired girl had wanted in a passing fancy, and Sakura couldn't take anyone beating her at anything. Then Naruto smiled at her, his eyes closing in that strange way of his, before he collapsed on the ground and pulled her into his lap in another hug. I'm so sorry Ino, he whispered, and she felt something wet splash against her, and knew that he was crying too, despite the fact his smile was still in place. It struck her then, how fake that last smile had been. How each smile had just a hint of something hidden in it, and realized that it was his mask that he was just as hurt as her, just as lost, but there was something painfully real there that said at least a part of him had been happy to be with her. Something stirred in her, something she thought she'd locked away when a lost little girl with pink hair had thrown Eno's gift back in her face and declared they were rivals, tossing away everything they had over some boy. The desire to help one last lost soul before hers was completely erased by the girl who destroyed her world, and Naruto, W what's wrong? She whispered through her own tears, clinging to him and ignoring the throbbing in her ankle, 
ignoring the swelling and pain in her limb for the one in their hearts. Naruto was silent as he cried, and it broke Ino's heart to think of what would force him to learn to cry without a sound. I I guess we were both wrong about her, Naruto said softly as he turned to bury his head in her neck. She blushed at the intimacy, but her hand moved to the back of his head, tangling her delicate fingers in his coarse hair. She always rejected my feelings. But I didn't think she'd, that she would actually, he said, breaking down, his tears soaking her violet shirt. Ino realized just how fragile he was, wondered how he'd been so strong for so long with no one to support him beyond their teacher from the academy. They were silent, their tears falling like rain, alone, but for each other, Ino felt cleaner as she cried than she had in a very long time, it felt good to help someone again, to be helped in turn. Well well, I didn't think it was that bad with you Ino, but for the two of you to leave each other in tears, it must have been truly horrible, and right here on the roofs, you really do have no shame, do you Ino pig, a perfect feminine voice said, her tone so friendly it dreamt with disdain, Naruto, if you were that desperate to get laid, I could have at least set you up with someone who you weren't likely to catch something from, so what was the deal Eno, you need a place to stay that badly, after your parents kicked you out that you're willing to pay for it with sex, picking the loneliest guy in the village in the hopes he wouldn't turn you out on the street, they broke apart in a rush, standing up with Eno leaning on Naruto and favoring her injured ankle, Sakura stood not four feet away, a smirk on her lovely features, as she twisted a lock of pink hair around her finger, Eno was about to tear into her rival, when the other woman's words sank in, what? She asked dazedly, staring in horror at Sakura. The other woman gave a light laugh as she held up a stack of papers with an official seal on them from the Kanoha Hospital. Well, I went by there to drop off the results from your latest screening. Since I figured news like this was best delivered in person, and of course your parents were concerned and insisted that I tell them what was wrong, Sakura said as she slipped the papers in an official envelope and tossed them to Ino. So of course I had to tell them what you had, and then I had to explain how you got them all. Sakura continued as she looked up at the clouds, a sympathetic expression on her face that didn't reach her eyes. Let's just say your mother was heartbroken that her daughter would fall so far, and your dad disowned you. But you know all that already or else you wouldn't be begging Naruto for a place to stay with that diseased body of yours. Sakura shook her head sadly, so beautiful, yet so horribly ugly. Ino pulled out the papers and flipped through them, staring at the least of diseases, some of which she didn't know, but from the others it looked like most were sexually transmitted. These, these are fake, I don't have these. Ino cried, tears welling up in her eyes as she crumbled the papers in her fist. She never thought that Sakura would go this far to attack her with her family, using the rumors she'd spread to isolate Ino away from everyone all over one stupid mistake. Before she could do anything though, Naruto leapt to her defense and spat at Sakura's feet. She quivered at the pure rage that was coming off of the big blonde man at her side, watched as he seemed to glow with killing intent. He was so different from that little loudmouth from so long ago. How dare you, he growled, eyes flashing. How dare you, Sakura. His roar nearly deafened her as he let her slip off his arm and charge the pink-haired woman. For a breathless moment, Ino thought she was going to hit the ground, only to be lifted into the air bridal style by another Naruto who appeared behind her with a pop. She hadn't even seen the hand signs for his shadow clone just to. But she was too distracted by Naruto's fist passing within an inch of Sakura's head as the woman twitched to the side in fear. What followed was a dance of brutality surpassed only by its beauty. Sakura's fist blew craters and destroyed at least on building before the two were in the air, slashing with kunai and slashing slamming their limbs into each other with enough force to shatter bones, Ino heard Sakura scream in rage as she drove her fist into Naruto's chest, screaming how she was only trying to do what was best for the blonde man, how she was trying to protect him from making a serious mistake, Naruto's answering roar sounded almost demonic as he caught her blow with his hand and broke her arm, taunting her with her constant rejections of him her lies about all the other girls, when he started to show the slightest interest in someone else. Blood fell like raindrops from the both of them, and Eno thought it could have been beautiful if it weren't so personal. Tears ran with the blood, as she felt herself crushed beneath the weight of not having a home to return to, to spending the rest of her life being viewed as a horrible, diseased woman who'd sleep with anything. Then she saw Sakura go flying and Naruto landing next to her, breathing hard and bloody, watched as he made several clones and sent them after the pink-haired woman, before asking if she was alright and leading the way to his apartment. Ino thought that it was nice to be held by him, even if it was just a clone, and wish it was him holding her instead. The lying papers were clenched in her fist, and as soon as she could she go to Tsunade herself and get another checkup, just to prove they were lies, slowly, almost afraid that the enraged man before her would rip apart the next thing to touch him. She reached out and grasped his hand, she smiled as he looked at her, confused, and tightened her grip, thank you, Naruto, no one has stood up for me for a very long time, she said softly, giving him a grateful look. Naruto gave her a cheesy grin as he blushed and scratched the back of his neck, you don't have to thank me Ino, it's not really a big deal, he replied, Ino clenched his hand tightly and forced him to look in her eyes, you're wrong Naruto, it's a very big 
big deal, especially to me, about three months after Asuma sensei's death, everyone started shutting me out, they left me behind like I was just some shallow pretty girl who should quit playing ninja, all because I couldn't save my teacher, when Sakura started spreading rumors about me, no one spoke up against them, no one had my back, not even my teammates, she said earnestly, climbing out of his shadow clone's arms and forcing him to hold her instead, you don't know the number of guys I've had to fight off because they thought I was a slut, or the number who said they did me, and I was such a freak, wanting so many weird things that people won't even look at me without disdain, she whimpered, burying her face in his strong chest, tears welled up in her eyes, everyone thinks I'm a freak, that I'm some sort of insane sex pervert who will do anything. You're the only one who doesn't look at me like that, who actually stood up for me. She cried, clutching him as she sobbed, letting everything out, Ino knew she was making her savior uncomfortable as they traveled, and that he sent the clone that had been carrying her off somewhere, she cried for a good five minutes before he jostled her in his arms, Ino, hey, we're at my place so let's see if we can't fix up that ankle of yours, he said, adjusting his bridal style grip on her body, as he crossed the threshold into his home, Ino pulled out of his chest enough so she could look at his home, wondering where she would stay, since her parents had kicked her out, Sakura could have been lying, but Ino knew the pink-haired bitch well enough to seriously doubt it, I wonder if Naruto would let me stay here in exchange for helping with the rent and housework, she thought, looking at the incredible mess that covered everything, maybe he'll settle for just the housework, she watched as Naruto cleaned off one of the sofa cushions with his foot, knocking empty Raymond cups, scrolls, and various weapons to the floor, before setting her down gently and sitting on the coffee table in front of the sofa, well, let's take a look at that ankle, he said, pulling her sandal off and running his large hands over her delicate foot, Ino bit her lip, at first to keep from hissing with pain, and then to stop the giggles as his thumb traced the arch of her foot, he kept running his hands from her toes up to her calves and back again, she watched as his hands started to glow with blue chakra, and the pain receded, Naruto looked up at her gasp, grinning at her, I bet you didn't know I could do that, he said with a laugh, the swelling went down, then the pain was gone, and Ino knew her ankle was completely healed, it was still tender though, and that meant she'd have to take it easy for a few days, but it was healed, she threw herself against Naruto and wrapped her arms around him, burying her face in the crook of his neck and shoulders, whispering her thanks over and over, she felt him rub her back with one hand and balance her with the other on her shapely hip, you're welcome Ino, he said happily, but it wasn't really that big of a deal, she squeezed tighter and decided right then and there to get it through his thick skull, that it was a big deal, everything that he did was a big deal, helping everyone without a second thought, suddenly, he shuddered in her grasp and she pulled back, a worried expression on her delicate features, Naruto gave her a sad look, adjusting his grip on her, so that his arms were wrapped loosely around the small of her back, shadow clone, he said simply, at her confused look, he elaborated, I get their memories when they dispel, the one I sent to your place just confirmed what Sakura said earlier, I'm so sorry, Ino, even though she'd been prepared for it, the word still struck her like a fist in her gut, she didn't have a home, her parents trusted her rival more than they trusted her, she was all alone, except for the faint hope that the man in front of her might show just a little more kindness that she really didn't deserve at this point, her body sagged as everything sunk in, the loneliness and depression and hopelessness, she should just give up being a ninja, or a wife, or a mother, or any of her other dreams that she'd had since she was a little girl, because none of them would ever becoming true now, her reputation was gone, her skills were weak at best, and she didn't have a home anymore, it was almost enough to make her want to die, you know, I know you're probably the farthest thing from Oka okay right now, but you can stay here until something better comes along, if you want to, Naruto's voice cut through everything, all the darkness, the hopelessness, the loneliness, in that moment she knew she'd give anything to take that hope, do everything all those bastards accused her of wanting to do with them, if it meant Naruto would accept her, her head shot up, blonde hair whipping around as if in a storm as she gazed at him with tear-filled eyes, she slid her arms so they were wrapped around his neck and gave him a watery, grateful smile, I I would like that very much, Naruto-kun, she said softly, her heart pounding wildly as his smile lit up the room, awesome, he said happily, before blushing and looking around his tiny apartment, well, it's not much, but you're welcome here, as long as you want to be, he said, before setting her down on the couch and flying about in an attempt to clean up, Eno stood slowly, grabbing him as he flew past in an orange and black blur, he looked up at her curiously, his eyes closing as he thought, Naruto, please, you're being so nice to me, at least let me take care of the housework for now, in return for you letting me stay here, she said softly, but with enough of an edge to her voice that he wouldn't argue, she watched as he opened his mouth to protest, but the part of her that was so grateful to him, wouldn't let it happen, so she did the only thing she could think of to shut him up, she kissed him, on the lips, it didn't last more than a few seconds, but it did the job wonderfully, she had to fight back the fit of giggles that almost 
almost erupted at the sight of his dazed face, with its too cute dreamy expression, now, I am not going to take no for an answer, if you want to help, then you can go sneak into my former home and bring me some clothes, I'll have this place cleaned up by the time you get back here, she said as she guided him to the door and pushed him out, and don't forget my underwear, it's in the top drawer of my dresser she said, giving him a sexy smile as she winked the eye not covered by her hair. She laughed, sounding like silver bells, as she watched him blush and shut the door before he could protest. Turning around, she surveyed the room, noting the small kitchen which was attached to the living room, then there was the bathroom, which was so tiny that it only had a shower stall instead of a tub, lastly was the bedroom, also small, with a king-size bed that ate up most of the room. It wasn't what she was used to, and boy was it a mess, but it would do. Bending over, she picked up a pair of green boxers with orange frogs and tried to bite back another laugh. There were worse things in life than having to clean up after one's hero, especially when he was so big and handsome. She was about two hours into the job, with several loads of laundry running in the washer's three floors below, when Naruto returned, along with six shadow clones of himself, lugging in several plastic bags, Ino shook her head and decided she'd teach him how to treat her clothes properly some other time, at least he was trying. Plus, a stunned look on his face as she stirred a pot of ramen on the stove was cute enough to distract her temper. It took another three hours to finish the laundry, clean up from dinner, and pack her clothing away, along with the pleasure of Naruto blushing at her tiny black and violet thongs, before they had to deal with sleeping arrangements. Naruto hadn't realized what it meant to only have one bed in the apartment until Ino finished putting the clean sheets on the bed, he'd insisted on taking the couch and letting her have the bed, but Ino wouldn't hear it, I'm not letting the man who spent the entire day rescuing me sleep on the couch couch. She said fiercely, her cornflower blue eyes blazing as she backed him against the wall, now, either I take the couch, she started, watching as he protested again, or I'm sharing that bed with you, your choice. Naruto hadn't been happy about that, he was too noble to let a woman sleep on his couch, the inevitable occurred, Ino smirked as she slipped into her small violet nightie, that showed off her wondrous figure, okay Naruto, you can come in now. She called happily, glancing at the mirror in the corner, loving how the short nightgown showed off her cute butt. Naruto came in, wearing a pair of boxers and a t-shirt, in his sexy no just to form. It had been the only way he'd agree to share the bed, and Ino had to admit the tall, leggy blonde woman standing sheepishly across from her was almost her equal in beauty, really cute, especially with the whisker marks on her cheeks. If she'd been a lesbian she'd have jumped the girl in a second. Are you sure you can hold it all night long? Ino asked as she climbed in the bed, making sure to show off her body as much as she could. She grinned to herself as Naruto blushed at the sight of the violet butterfly thong she was wearing. Her blonde savior climbed in on the other side of the bed, turning off the lights as he did so. Ino giggled at the small meat that came from her hero, as she curled around the now female Naruto. Thank you so much for this, Naruto-kun, Ino whispered as she laid her head on the soft chest beside her. Oh, um, you're very welcome, Ino-chan, Naruto replied, her voice so cute and sexy to Ino's ears. Night. Good night, Naruto, she whispered, smiling for what felt like the first time in forever. Ino woke up the next morning next next to a very male presence, and almost sent it flying, before she realized the bed she was sleeping in wasn't hers, and the events of the previous day came rushing back, the rage she'd felt instantly died away, and some of the gratefulness she'd felt previously came washing back over her, she felt so peaceful and rested that she didn't mind her nightgown had ridden up to just under her full breasts, or that Naruto's large warm hand was resting on her cute little butt, the fact that her legs were wrapped around his body and were rubbing against certain part of him, did put her off some though, she blushed scarlet and tried to untangle herself, but even the slightest movement caused a reaction in her savior, who rolled over in his sleep so that he was facing her, his arms coming to wrap around her in a very strong embrace, Ino was about to push him off when she caught a glimpse of his face as he held her, it was the same look she'd had as a little girl when she'd clutched her teddy bear during a thunderstorm, or when she was lonely, I guess he just really needs to not be alone for once she thought to herself, wrapping her own delicate arms around his broad back, it was, Ino thought dreamily as she felt herself drifting off, kind of like holding a giant teddy bear, which was about the time his alarm clock went off and completely shattered the wonderful little piece that had settled over them, Ino thought the effect the loud ringing had on Naruto would have been funny if he hadn't sent her flying across the tiny bedroom as he bolted into the air and flew down the hallway. She glared at him as he returned, his head poking around the door frame, blushing wildly. Tell me, is this how you treat all the girls the morning after? She asked sarcastically, levering herself up with the bed frame, she growled at the ruined moment and the fact that her nightgown was showing more skin than it covered, still, the look on his face as his brain shut down from what he was seeing was cute, Ino debated for a moment if she wanted to chastise him for tossing her out of the bed or try and recapture some of the emotions from yesterday, the crushing realization that she needed him so very much at the moment made her decision for her, but she didn't care, striking a sexy pose, cocking her hips and thrusting her ample breasts out slightly, while fluttering her eyelashes, she purred, like what you see, Naruto-kun. 
she asked in a breathy whisper emphasizing each syllable of his name as he walked fully into the room, not even his baggy orange boxers with the green frogs could disguise his instant reaction to her, under any other conditions, Eno would have struck him and screamed at him for being a pervert, but instead all she felt were trembling shivers that ran down her spine and pulled in her belly, I am I, Naruto stuttered, his eyes flashing everywhere on her body and the rest of the room, as if he couldn't decide where to focus on, Eno grinned internally at the reaction, overjoyed that she could have that sort of effect on him. I guess this could be more fun than I thought she reflected, swaying over to him. The blush flooded her delicate features as she took full note of just how much of an effect she'd had on him, her mind forcing her to think of all the things he could do to her, she swallowed a lump in her throat as she brushed past him, the heat from his body pressing against her. I, I hope you don't mind if I shower first, she said, trying to muster as much confidence as she could, looking up at his dazed blue eyes. She was almost past him when her words sunk in, and he shook himself, his azure eyes glared down at her, and they both raced for the bathroom, the hell you are. He shouted, grabbing her waist and pulling her back as she grabbed desperately for the bathroom door, she squealed in protest, latching on tightly and trying to pull herself in before him, please, I really don't like cold water. She cried, laughing as he shifted his grip to hold her with one arm, his free hand dancing along her sides, tickling her, but this is my house. Naruto roared back, digging in his heels in, his deep laughter booming through the tiny apartment and through her lithe body, they struggled for several moments before Ino shoved herself backwards against him and ran her hips along his body, they froze at the intimate contact, rampant blushes covering their faces before Ino jerked away with a squeak and raced into the bathroom and locked the door behind her, she collapsed on the cool tiles as she heard Naruto pounding on the door, shouting something about pulling dirty tricks, but she was too dazed to pay attention, she pulled her legs up against her chest and wrapped her arms around them, resting her forehead on her knees, why the hell did I do that? She asked herself, her toes curling as she tried to block out the memories of Naruto's amazing body, pressing against her most sacred of places, eventually, she heard Naruto walk away muttering about cheating blonde vixens and managed to pull herself to her feet. Her shower was short, the water heater must have been broken, and the water ran cold after only three minutes, she shrieked and quickly scrubbed Naruto's orange-scented shampoo out of her hair, before leaping out of the shower, wet and shivering. She grabbed one of his oversized bright orange towels and wrapped it around her lean body, tying it just over her breasts, then grabbed a second and used it to wrap up her dripping hair, she might not have liked the color, but she had to admit Naruto's towels were really comfortable, she also made several mental notes of things she'd need if she was to stay here, including a razor to shave her legs with, she stuck her head out of the bathroom a moment later and came face to face with a scowling Naruto, who stood glaring down at her with his arms folded over his broad chest, Ino blinked as she realized he'd taken off the shirt from last night, her eyes gliding over the toned and rippling muscles that he was displaying, she forced another lump down her throat as she dragged her eyes up to his face, I, I am not letting him get the best of me she thought to herself, before a perfectly wonderful idea came to her. She threw the door open and swayed over to where her savior was scowling down at her, making sure the towel was just loose enough that it promised to fall even though it wouldn't, she stretched up on her toes, enjoying his six foot two frame, and kissed his cheek, flicking her tongue over his whisker scars, all yours, sweetie, she whispered huskily as she skipped down the hallway to the bedroom, she glanced back at him as she shut the door, pleased to note that he wasn't mad at her anymore, as the door clicked shut, she made her way over to the plastic bags Naruto had stuffed her clothes into, and tried to sort out what was where, a scowl played across her lips, as she noticed he seemed to have picked stuff that was either sexy or not really that practical. He'd even managed to find a violet made costume that she'd bought for Halloween a year ago. What he hadn't managed to bring over were any of her normal outfits, although there was plenty of her underwear. A part of her fumed at him being such a pervert, but pushed it aside and planned on making a trip to her parents' place to collect some of her things. She wasn't going to live with her parents anymore though. Even if they worked out what Sakura had done, they'd proven they didn't trust her enough to talk to her. Before doing something as drastic as disown her, Ino grabbed some random clothing that looked passingly normal and tossed them on the bed, before letting the towel that was wrapped around her body come undone and rubbed herself dry. She was going to stay here with Naruto, who at least valued her as something more than worthless, and that was final. Hearing the water turning off in the shower, Ino quickly let her towel drop and threw her clothes on, loving the feel of the silk underwear as it caressed her, the violet thong and white, strapless bra covering her like a second skin, the violet miniskirt went on next, hugging her ass and ending just above mid-thigh, a white peasant top that bared her shoulders, and a black leather belt cinched around her waist completed the outfit, and she made her way back to the bathroom to see if Naruto had a hairdryer. She knocked lightly on the door and smiled at the sight of Naruto's disembodied head, giving her another sour look, his hair plastered to his skull. Hey, um, do you have a hairdryer I can borrow? 
she asked sweetly, clasping her hands in front of her demurely, she didn't like being submissive, but sometimes it worked better than screaming her head off, especially since the person she was asking had been so nice to her, she could have guilty him with his throwing her through the air, but after stealing the shower, she didn't think that was a good idea, it wouldn't do to force her only friend to kick her out on the street, Naruto went back into the bathroom and shut the door, only to reappear a moment later with a rather beat up hairdryer, she took it gratefully, thanking him profusely and rushed down the hallway to the kitchen, where she wouldn't damage the floors with her wet hair, glancing around the tiny cooking area, she flipped through the cabinets and fridge, pulling out some eggs, milk, an orange apron that had a little green frog on it, and pancake mix which she started mixing together after tying the apron on, I guess I might as well make sure Naruto-kun eats a good breakfast she thought to herself, as she pulled out an extremely beat up frying pan and turned on the stove, she heard her savior come into the kitchen and freeze, she turned around enough so she could see him and blushed, Naruto was dressed in a pair of black jeans and was drying his hair with another orange towel, the stunned look on his face made Ino wish she had a camera, what, can't a girl cook breakfast for the man who saved her? She asked sweetly, aware that she must have looked very housewifey at the moment, with her hair up in a towel and an apron tied around her waist, the thought sent a warm wash of pleasure through her, she loved being a shinobi but a part of her had always wanted to live like her mom, tending the family flower shop and taking care of her home, instead of constantly going out on missions. If she hadn't been an only child, she might have had that chance, but there wasn't any reason to curse the past, not when it looked like the only option left to her was being the housewife of whoever would treat her well, with Sakura being the Hokage's apprentice and her own failings, being a shinobi wasn't much of an option anymore. And since Naruto was the only one who respected her anymore, she guessed she'd have to find a way to convince him to take her, she didn't think she'd have much competition but he'd started to get a rather large gathering of fangirls in the last couple of years, and she knew they'd try and make life hell for the chance of taking her place. Um, thanks Ino-chan, Naruto said dazedly as he took a seat at the counter that divided the living room and kitchenette, Ino flipped the pancakes and smiled at him sweetly, wondering if it was the hormones, loneliness, or something else that was making her dream of becoming Ino Uzumaki. You're more than welcome Naruto-kun, it's the least I can do to repay you, she replied happily. Her cornflower blue eyes sparkling, turning back to the oven, she made sure to push her butt out towards him slightly, letting his eyes wander her curves, she was still a kanoichi, and she was more than willing to play dirty for what she wanted, she spun around with the wonderful smelling cakes piled high on a plate and produced a bottle of syrup, setting both of them down in front of him, Ino grinned as she watched Naruto's eyes snap up to her face, a blush staining his handsome features, Ino almost thought of telling that it was okay to stare, but it was way too early to let him do things like that, maybe later, when they'd gotten closer, Naruto, please, I promise they're not poisoned, Ino said softly, blushing at how intently he was staring at her, her eyes widened with horror, as moisture started to gather in his azure orbs, Naruto-kun, what's wrong? She asked, rushing around and perching on the bar stool next to him, Naruto just smiled at her sadly, relaxing into her hands as she cupped his face with him, it it's nothing I no chan, he said softly, closing his eyes with a real, genuine smile, it's just no one has ever really cooked for me before, Ino froze, as her mind tried to process the fact that no one had cared enough about the man before her, to even do something as small as cook for him, she'd grown up in a home where her mom usually had dinner on the table when she and her father came home, it was a fundamental part of what she'd known growing up, she thought everyone had that, even if Naruto was an orphan, he should have had at least one person do it for him at some point, in that moment, Ino knew she'd make sure he'd get as many homemade meals as he could, that each and every night for the rest of the time she spent living with him, he would find a meal ready and waiting for him, Sakura might have beaten her at ninjutsu, but Ino was determined that Sakura wouldn't beat her at anything else ever again, starting with who treated Naruto better. She forced Naruto to look her in the eyes, wiping away the tears that were collecting in the corners of his eyes, Naruto-kun, she whispered once he was looking at, I promise that as long as I'm here with you, I'll cook for you as much as you want, his eye widened, then filled with even more tears, before Ino found herself in a bone-crushing hug against his bare chest, and the thank you he kept repeating rumbling through her body, she wrapped her arms around him, extremely aware of just how close they were and how strong he was, he released her after a few moments, both of them blushing wildly as they turned to look elsewhere, and she heard him start eating, wow you know, these never tasted this good when I make them, he shouted with a full mouth, crumbs going everywhere, she was about to tell him to chew with his mouth closed when his arm shot around her waist and pulled her back against his chest, thank you so much, Ino-chan, he rumbled happily, planting a kiss on her cheek, Ino felt her heart about to explode, so far, she'd been the one to kiss him, and that been just to distract him, to have him kiss her, sent her imagination into overdrive to the point she didn't notice him pulling her into his lap, keeping one arm wrapped around her thin waist, oi, Ino-chan, here, eat something. 
Naruto said happily, Ino shook herself and spotted the fork Naruto was holding in front of mouth, she decided to worry about how she got on his lap later and just go with the moment, she snatched a bite and found her eyes widening at how good it was, she'd never made pancake that were this good, a small moan escaped her as she chewed and she wriggled in pleasure, inadvertently rubbing her body against Naruto's, she heard him start breathing harder for a second and blushed as something pressed against her, but they both ignored it as Naruto cut another bite out of the pancakes and raised it to his mouth, Ino snapped her head and grabbed to food before he could, moaning again as Naruto protested, hey, Ino, give it back. He ordered, glowering at her as if she were a naughty little girl instead of her 18-year-old self, she gave him a pleased smile and shook her head, grinning at him, daring him to try and get the food back, her eyes widened as he did just that, claiming her mouth in a searing kiss and rammed his tongue into her mouth, scooping up the pancake she'd stolen and pulling it back with him, Ino hung her head limply to the side as she tried to recover, while Naruto ate unhappily, wow, I didn't think he could kiss that good she thought dazedly, as she sagged against him, I might have steal food from him more often, by the time she'd collected herself, Naruto had finished the food she'd made and was asking her if she was alright, Ino nodded slowly, yeah, I'm okay, Naruto-kun, she said dazedly, climbing off his lap and grabbing the dishes, she heard Naruto laughing lightly and scowled at him, refusing to give in any further to the effects of his kiss, so what are your plans for the day? She asked as she put the dishes in the sink and started to wash them. Naruto shot her a foxy grin as she turned around to see what he was doing. Why Miss Yamanaka, if I didn't know better, I'd say you were my wife, he said jokingly, rubbing the back of his neck, Ino spun around, turning crimson. I was just asking, she said stiffly, scrubbing harshly at the syrup that was sticking to the plate. Naruto laughed, causing her to get miffed, upset that he'd seen through her so easily. Don't worry Ino-chan, I think you'd make a great wife. Naruto said happily as he got up and headed into the bedroom, Ino let the dishes clatter in the sink as his word sunk in, and she sagged against the sink, her hand coming up to cover her heart through the apron, no one had complimented her since her sensei died, and here was Naruto throwing the matter every few minutes, unintentional or not, thank you, Naruto-kun she thought to herself, her heart fluttering about wildly in her chest, Ino finished the dishes by the time Naruto came out, dressed in his normal outfit, and quickly raced over to the door as he started to leave the apartment, she leaned against the wall next to the door as he opened it and looked up at him, working to put on the cutest look she could, so, what time do you think you'll get home? She asked sweetly, clasping her hands in front of her skirt and giving him a slightly pouty look, Naruto stammered for a moment before he pulled himself together, around five, I think, he said, his eyes closing in thought, why? Ino put her hands on his shoulder and kissed his cheek, grinning up at him as she pulled away, so I know what time I need to have dinner ready, silly, I promise to cook for you remember, she said sweetly, leaning towards him slightly, now go have a wonderful day she said happily, gently pushing him out the door, just as she was about to close the door after him, Naruto stuck his head back inside and handed her a key, here, that way you can lock the door in case you have to go out, and you don't have to stand around waiting for me to let you back in, he said, kissing her forehead before ducking out again and closing the door after himself, Ino stared at the closed door in shock for what felt like forever, pull it together Ino she said mentally, shaking herself, this is not the time to give in to some wild crush, you have to focus and make sure this is going to work out, because if it doesn't you you're fucked, with a solid shake, she spun around and marched into the kitchen and finished cleaning up from breakfast, when that was done and the dishes were put up to dry, Ino decided she needed to take stock of what was in the house and what she would need, Naruto was a gracious host, but Ino admitted he was as oblivious as he was cute, which was a lot, it only took a few minutes to realize that other than the pancake mix she'd used earlier, Naruto had very little in the way of food, except for lots of ramen, some milk, and the eggs she delved into earlier, it's amazing he's as big and strong as he is eating only ramen she thought to herself, before grabbing a pad of paper and pen, and furiously scribbling down various other and more nutritional foods, if she was going to be cooking for her savior, she wasn't going to be making ramen every night, it took only slightly longer for her to go through her own possessions to realize she'd be needing a lot, first would be her personal grooming items, makeup, more normal clothing that what Naruto had picked, a dozen other things that he hadn't noticed and she hadn't told him about, her best course of action would be to sneak into her old home, it hurt to think of it that way, but Ninja didn't let pain stop them and hoped she avoided her parents, which would be really hard, seeing as her mom would likely still be home and probably even be in her room, wondering where she'd gone wrong, Ino really, really didn't want to deal with that until she had the paperwork from Tsunade, proving Sakura had been lying, plus, there was the fact that
that her parents had trusted someone else's word over hers without even asking. That was something that really hurt, driving a kunai into her heart and twisting cruelly. That left her with going out and buying replacements, which would seriously cut into her bank account, depending on how much she decided to get, that way she wouldn't have to see her parents. But it didn't really leave her with much should Naruto decide she needed to go find somewhere else to live, it wasn't likely, he was far too sweet to do something like that, but it never hurt to be prepared, especially considering how persuasive Sakura could be, and that Naruto wasn't the cleverest of people. Ino tried to not let her heart clench at the idea of the man who'd become her savior and hero turning on her like everyone else. She collapsed on the sofa, ignoring how dusty it was, going out meant seeing people, feeling their eyes on her, judging her for crimes she never committed, see men looking at her like she would do any dirty thing they asked, see women looking at her like she would tempt their men astray and lead them on immoral paths that would ruin their happy homes. She drew her knees to her chest and hugged them, staring blankly at the small, battered TV set that Naruto had sitting on a lopsided stand, a disc player, and several re claimed movies scattered about underneath. It wasn't anything like the nice set her parents had, all shiny and new, everything about Naruto's life seemed like that, shabby and second best, even her. He's so nice, he really deserves to have a better life she thought sadly. It was that thought that pushed aside the worry and depression for just long enough for her to realize that she could give it to him, give him a better life, and find a purpose for herself in her own new life. Naruto was always proclaiming how he was going to be Hokage, and Ino knew that if there was even the tiniest bit of the justice that had been stolen from her left in the universe, she was going to snatch it away and give it to him, with her reputation, she might never have a hope of anything but she could at least see that one last person got their chance, she'd wasted so much on Sakura, but she just knew that Naruto wouldn't do that to her, and just maybe, he'd be so grateful that he'd help her go someplace where they'd never heard of her reputation, and she could live a normal life, she was never going to be a ninja, not with all her failures, but she could at least become a wife and mother, and watch her children grow up, it was such a shame that she couldn't have him, but her reputation would only hurt him if they grew too close, people would respect him for helping her, but they would never let anything beyond that happen without judging him, Tears pricked her blue eyes, and she wiped them away with the back of her hand. Now was not the time to cry. She had one last mission as a ninja, and she was going to see it through. She stood up and marched out the door, closing and locking it behind her, before marching down the stairs and through the streets. Almost immediately, the whispers started, the glares, the disapproval. But for the first time in as long as she could remember, she didn't care what anyone thought. This was about her, doing something that mattered, without regard for Sakura, or her former friends, or anyone else but the man she owed. The first shop she entered was a small small drug store, where she purchased most of her personal care products, they were cheaper than the ones she normally bought, but she wasn't going back to the east side of Kanoha where parents lived, Naruto lived in the south side, and that's where she was going to live, shop, and enjoy herself from now on, the area wasn't as upscale as she was used to, but that didn't matter anymore, the glares weren't as bad here as they were in the east and north sides were, where the more upscale shinobi, merchants, and government administrators lived, people didn't care about things like that much down here in the poorer part of town, especially when it was a about someone they didn't know. She took her purchases and left the store quickly, not wanting to stay in one place too long in case someone decided to hassle her. The bag swung from her hand as she tried to think of what she was going to buy next. Clothes weren't that big a deal. Even if Naruto hadn't picked out her preferred type of clothing, she blushed, thinking of some of the things he'd picked and wondered if he'd grab them because that was what he wanted to see her in. Maybe she'd wait on the clothes and settle for picking up groceries. It was only 11 and Naruto wouldn't be coming home until 5. Maybe she should see about cleaning up the apartment better. With that, she set off again, rushing about, picking up the best produce she could find, getting a few essential cleaning produces that she knew Naruto probably didn't even know about, much less had, and rushed home all in under two hours. It had to be the shortest shopping trip she'd ever done, and Ino found a strange sort of pride in this. She was making it up the last few steps to the third floor when she saw a short woman who was just a few years older than her rapping on Naruto's door. Ino juggled the bag she was holding and drew out the key to Naruto's apartment, looking the woman over. She was only four and a half feet tall with jet black hair that was cut short, tapering to a point at the nape of her slim neck, with twin strands framing her attractive, if slightly stern, features, she was also incredibly thin, giving her an almost tomboyish appeal, if she hadn't made it forcefully apparent that she was a woman by wearing a short grey skirt and a button-down white blouse that almost clung to her, Ino was just reaching the woman's feet with her gaze, taking in the black knee-high socks and shiny black pumps, when the woman turned and looked at her coolly, are you looking for Naruto-kun? Ino asked quickly, drawing herself up as she reached the top of the stairs, the woman regarded her coolly for a moment before nodding slowly, yes, I am, she said calmly 
her steel-colored eyes roaming Eno with the gaze of someone who was used to judging people quickly and correctly, Eno tried hard to not blush under the woman's gaze, which was far more intense than any she'd ever felt, it felt like the woman was stripping away any defenses that she might have had and seen her for what she truly was. After a moment, the woman seemed to relax and even gave her an almost friendly smile, might I ask why you would be interested in Naruto-kun? The woman asked with a smirk, stressing the affectionate suffix Eno had used, now Eno felt herself blushing and looking out over the street as she moved to the door and slipped the key in as the other woman pulled away. I am staying with him for a while after I lost my last home, Eno said quickly, twisting the key sharply as she tried to force the door open. That's wonderful. Naruto could really use someone around the place to keep him from eating nothing but ramen, the woman said with a light laugh, covering her mouth with a tiny, delicate hand. My poor Shinji-kun was getting jealous of me bringing over some produce a couple of times a week. It is good to see Naruto finally having a woman around other that pink-haired girl. The woman continued as watched Eno open the door, freezing at the mention of Sakura being around Naruto. Eno turned turned her head so she could stare coolly at the shorter woman, I take it you don't approve of her then? She asked, watching as the woman met her gaze confidently, of course not, I am Naruto's next door neighbor, and these his walls are not all that thick, the woman started, waving her hand in a dismissive manner, I swear, that last fight they had two weeks ago was horrible, something about that girl ruining something for him, it woke up little Kensei, and I had to spend the next four hours walking him so he would go back to sleep, so no, I cannot say I approve of her or the effect she has on Naruto, the woman said regally, something about the woman struck Ino as strange, the woman acted like one of the elite, and she clearly didn't match most of the people living in the area. Ino shook her head slowly, looking at the woman curiously as she tried to figure her out. The woman seemed to notice the look as Ino set the bags inside the door and turned around to face her fully. I'm Ino Yamanaka, Ino said coolly, leaning against the doorframe. She knew she was being rude, but the woman across from her hadn't been all that polite either. The black-haired woman simply smirked and held out her hand. Rukia Harako, at your service, the woman said, the smirk never leaving her face. Ino grasped the hand, which had a surprisingly strong grip for. A woman that small, a pleasure, she replied, returning the smirk with her best ice princess smile. Rukia laughed lightly as they let go of each other. Please, forgive my rudeness. It is just that I have come to view Naruto as a little brother in the Year we have been neighbors. I merely wanted to make sure you were not someone who was likely to hurt him, Rukia said, her manner changing to a far friendlier form. Ino was a bit shocked, she hadn't been expecting that, but decided it could be a whole lot worse. In fact, this could be really good for her if Naruto was as close to this woman as she said they were. Ino relaxed against the doorframe. I'm glad to know that Naruto kun has someone looking out for him, she said, blushing lightly. I've come to owe him so much in just the last day that I want to repay him the best I can. She couldn't believe she was telling a perfect stranger even that much, but put it down to the stress she was under, Rukia gave her an appraising glance, running her eyes up and down Eno with a light smirk, I have never heard it called that before, but if you say he is that good I will believe you, the black haired woman said, continuing to wear her smirk, Naruto is full of surprises, it took Eno a moment to catch what Rukia had meant, that she felt her temper flare, this woman didn't even know her, and already she was acting like Eno was a whore, it wasn't even fair, she hadn't even done that with Naruto, Ino opened her mouth to tear into the woman, enjoying the shocked expression on the smaller woman's features, when handsome man Rukia's age stuck his head out the door of the next apartment, his blonde page boy cut hair blowing with his movements, the sounds of a crying baby following him out, love, there you are. The man shouted happily, his voice belying the tired look in his eyes, Eno watched as he strolled over, practically draping his tall form over his tiny wife, he cast a cheery smile that seemed to literally split his face from ear to ear at Eno, who snapped her mouth closed with a click, hello, and who might you be? The man asked, one hand coming up to shake hers as the other fell to the waistband of Rukia's skirt, Eno took it slowly, the hairs on the back of her neck rising slightly at his strange grin, Eno, Eno Yamanaka, and I take it, you would be Shinji Harako. She replied, watching in shock as his grin grew. Yep, I'm Rukia-chan's husband. He said happily, glancing at the door to their apartment, and as much as I would love to stay and chat, Kensei seems to have found something that upsets him, and I'm having no luck. He continued in the same cheery manner, so if you would pardon me, I need to borrow my wife for just a bit. Ino gave him a cool smile, before turning an icy glare on Rukia please, don't mind me, we just finished our conversation, she said before spinning and marching through the door to Naruto's apartment, she heard Shinji call a thank you as the door closed, Ino counted five heartbeats, before she raced into Naruto's bedroom and threw herself on the bed, she buried her face in the pillow, dragging in his scent with deep breaths in an attempt to calm herself, to keep from falling back into the deep depression that threatened to overwhelm her, she thought she'd at least get a break from being called a slut since she was meeting new people, but it didn't seem like she would have such luck. The 
fist-racking sob caught her by surprise, if the woman was as close to Naruto as she claimed, then he would take her word as very precious, and that meant there was a possibility that he wouldn't trust her about her reputation or Sakura's lies, everyone would write off what he'd done as him trying to do the noble thing, they'd forgive him for attacking Sakura, and everyone would look down at her even more, she wasn't sure how long she cried, but she guessed it was for several hours, because the only thing that brought her out of crying, was the sound of a key turning in the lock, she jerked upright, gazing with wide eyes at the digital clock that read 5 o'clock, a quick glance in a mirror, told Eno she was a mess of red puffy eyes, tear stains, hair that had gone wild, and rumbled clothes, she watched in horror as Naruto walked into the bedroom and caught her looking so horrible and ugly, she turned to try and hide the effects of her crying from him, because it would be too painful for him to care now and turn on her later, but it didn't matter, in an instant he was at her side, drawing her into a warm embrace that had her struggling and crying and trying to get away, because this was only going to hurt, how could she even think for an instant that she'd found someone who would treat her like she wanted to be treated, like she was a person, and not an overly willing sex object who wanted everything done to her. Filled with tears and rage and pain, she spilled it out as she cracked him with her elbow in his jaw, trying to run away before he pulled her into his strong chest and held her tight and asked her explain what was wrong, because he couldn't stand to see a woman cry, especially one as beautiful as her, begging her to let him save her again, she sobbed into his chest, fists clenching his stupid orange and black jacket, and told him everything about her day, about what she'd felt and how people had treated her, finishing with Rukia and Shinji, he held for what felt like eternity, and was far too short, because she knew it would be the last time he held her, before he told her to go away, when she'd calmed down, he suggests she clean herself up, because washing away all the tears would make her feel better, he gave her his biggest cheesiest grin, and it hurt her heart, but she did as he suggested while he went over to talk to his neighbors, and when he got back, carrying a large dish filled with a pasta casserole and a handwritten apology from Rukia, the neat letters detailing the black-haired woman's mistake, and the hope that Eno would forgive her, the misplaced young woman looked into Naruto's eyes and knew that he still trusted and cared about her, she gave him a watery smile and a hug, and thanked him for believing her, Naruto laughed and wrapped her in a hug, and told her he was glad too, after all, he couldn't run her off before he tried more of her home cooking, Eno was too busy crying and laughing at him to bother getting mad at him for the comment, she didn't want to leave before she had cooked for him again anyways, Eno was going to kill Naruto, yes, it had been her idea that they have a picnic, but this wasn't exactly what she'd had in mind this morning, with Naruto's strong arms around her and her head pillowed on his bare chest, she thought they would find a nice spot under the trees, maybe by a stream they could go wading in, and an afternoon spent by themselves where she could grow closer to him, she had not envisioned being left holding a picnic basket full of sandwiches and ramen, while her savior brawled with Kiba and Yuzuka, and his dog Akimaru, using an insanely overgrown toad, as impressed as she had been when Naruto had brought the giant orange toad out, laughing and joking with each other like they were best friends, Ino realized that they probably weren't going to be enjoying the rest of the day, after all, it wasn't like she wasn't used to comments like the one Kiba had thrown at her, and really, it was sweet of Naruto to come to her defense, she would have preferred he let it alone, and let them go enjoy themselves, but Kiba had been like a dog with a bone, and Naruto wasn't ever going to back down from a challenge, even if it was right in the middle of the street in front of dozens of people, and who cared if they destroyed countless objects in the process, dual piercing fang. Kiba roared as he launched him into the air with Akimaru, the giant white dog howling as they spun through the air towards Naruto, I'll teach you to call Inochan a slut. Gamakichi, now. Fireball no jutsu. Naruto shouted toward the spinning gray tornadoes, leaping on the giant toad's back and launching a fireball into the stream of oil the toad was spewing. The impromptu flamethrower slammed into the twin tornadoes, causing Kiba and Akimaru to go flying and flames to spread everywhere. People ran screaming as stores burst into flame, Ino watched in horror, her rage at Naruto getting involved in a street brawl, fading as she watched the destruction, the two young men were jounin, they'd been friends not two hours ago, and now they were tearing everything apart all because of her, Ino knew most girls would feel flattered to have the man they were attracted to rise up and defend their honor, but at the moment she only felt sick, stop it please. She screamed, the basket of food falling at her feet, tears started to fall down her face as she raced in between the two men as they charged at each other, she watched in horror as the giant toad slashed at Akimaru with a sword, as Naruto was struck with Kiba's claws across his face and drove his foot into the other man's gut, Ino hated herself, hated that she was crying, hated that no matter where she went everyone suffered, the combatants flew apart for a second and she dove in, wrapping her arms around Naruto's chest and begging him to stop fighting because she wasn't worth it, then she heard Kiba yelling something to Akimaru and Naruto was pushing her away as the other man slammed into his gut, Ino didn't even notice the pain as she landed on her butt, her eyes widening in shock as she watched them grapple and trade insults, I don't see why you're defending that slut, Naruto, she can't be that great in bed, Kiba howled as he slashed with his claws, like you're one to talk, tell me, when was the last time your sister got off her hands and knees in those kennels of yours?
Naruto shot back as three more of his clones appeared and leapt onto the fighters, Kiba roared in rage and redoubled his efforts to injure Naruto. Ino felt the glare's focus on her and heard those who weren't too busy fighting the fires start to blame her for the young men's quarrel, most of them were women, giving her disapproving looks as if she could stop this if she wanted to, but she couldn't, Naruto was too far gone into his fight with Kiba and she didn't even know the Inuzuka well enough to dissuade him from hurting her hero. She was sure they were just minutes away from Kanoha's elite Anbu, showing up and arresting them all. When Ino recognized the tiny woman who had just wormed her way through the crowd, balancing a baby on one small hip and scowling at Naruto, who had just managed to get on top of Kiba and was currently pounding away for all he was worth. Arukia? Ino asked uncertainly, causing the other woman to walk over to her and give her a smirk, well well, getting boys to fight over you, I am impressed, Rukia said with a light laugh, Ino slumped and shook her head slightly, I it's not like that, she replied, staring at the ground, she looked up as Rukia nudged her firmly with one shiny black shoe, and was shocked to see Rukia holding out her little boy, take him, if I am going to have to go over there and break up that fight, I do not want him hurt, Rukia said firmly, Ino gently grasped the little baby and curled around him, holding close her chest as Rukia stormed over to where Naruto and Kiba were rolling around, wildly cursing and striking each other, Ino felt a twinge, remembering when she'd been that strong and confident in herself, if only if only she hadn't slept with him, if only Sakura hadn't taken it so personally, if only her parents or friends had trusted her, she might still be that way, maybe if she could stay with Naruto for just a little while, she might be able to be that strong again, she watched as Rukia stopped just at the edge of the pile of limbs and angry voices, scowling down at the two men, then she did something that would shock Ino for the rest of her life, with a sharp cry, Rukia lashed out with her foot and sent the two men flying apart to crash into a damaged storefront a good six feet away, Naruto was the first to appear, his head popping out of the rubble like a gopher, irately glaring around for the source of the attack, Gamechi, I told you to keep the damn dog at bay. He roared at the toad, who was currently wrestling Akamaru, the toad rolled his eyes to glare at Naruto, what the hell does it look like I'm doing boss? Emakichi shouted back, Ino watched as Naruto stared at the two animals quizzically, her heart fluttering at how cute he looked as he tried to figure out what had happened, well who hit me then? He yelled, glaring wildly around in an attempt to find his attacker. Giba popped up next to him, blood gushing from a cut on his forehead, what the hell happened? The Inuzuka howled, Naruto turned to yell something at him, only to go silent as a shadow loomed over them. Ino was never really sure how Rukia could look so intimidating, considering how small she was, but even a good 12 feet away, she felt intimidated by the tiny woman as she loomed over Naruto and Kiba, the looks on the two young men's faces probably helped with that, Ino could almost feel the relief coming from Kiba as Rukia focused completely on Naruto, the tiny woman tapped her foot for a few moments, before shaking her finger at Naruto in that manner all mothers had used on naughty children since the beginning of parenthood, Naruto, what do you think you are doing? She asked softly, Ino thought it would have been kind of cute if Rukia wasn't so damn scary, Ino watched as Naruto stuttered out about what Kiba had said, only to have the other young man protest Naruto's own comments, the two men started trading insults and almost came to blows before Rukia yelled at them to shut up, Ino glanced to the side as a shadow fell over her and Rukia's little boy, jumping in surprise as she saw Gamakichi plop down beside her with a picnic basket in his hand, here you go, he said in a deep voice that rumbled the ground, oh, thank you, Ino replied, as she picked herself up off the ground and retrieved the basket from the toad with a bow, slowly, she picked her way through the rubble till she was standing next to Rukia, Naruto gave her a worried look, but instead of ranting at him like she would have a few months ago, she merely set the basket down and offered him a hand, the loud blonde took it and heaved himself out of the rubble, pointedly ignoring Kiba's angry shouts and Rukia's scolding, I wanted to melt as he stared into my eyes, I'm sorry about getting you involved in the fight, you know, Naruto said softly, still holding my hand, I fought down a blush and shook my head, causing my ponytail to sway about, no, Naruto, I'm the one who should apologize, you got hurt defending my non-existent honor, so it's entirely my fault, I replied softly, afraid of what my voice would do if I spoke any louder, I felt a tugging at my arm and turned to find Rukia reclaiming her son, I suggest the two of you leave before the police show up, I'll handle everything, the tiny woman said firmly, waving the two of us off with a wave of her hand, I nodded and grabbed Naruto's hand, letting my savior drag me off, just as the police started busting their way through the crowds, in moments we were flying down the back streets, Naruto laughing as he whipped us around corners and over stairs, I had to admit, it was pretty fun, ducking the people looking for us, until we made it into a secluded meadow, we collapsed on the ground, the picnic basket landing somewhere off to my left, breathing hard, I closed my eyes as I lay back against the soft grass, letting the sun warm my fair skin, 
it had been so long since I felt that I could relax, let everything go, be at peace, I heard Naruto stirring beside me, and figured he was going for the picnic basket, so he could stuff his face, a tiny smile played at the corners of my full lips, as I thought about how cute he was when he was stuffing his face, so when I felt his strong arm wrap around my waist and pull me close to him so that we were pressed together almost intimately, I squeaked in surprise, I was sure my face was scarlet as I looked up at him, when had he gotten so tall? and caught his blue eyes staring down at me with several emotions I couldn't describe, he seemed almost as shocked by his actions as I was, but didn't seem to want to let go, I didn't want him to, I closed my eyes and savored the feel of someone holding me and not judging me or expecting something I wasn't willing to give, but then that damn voice in the back of my head started up, telling me how I couldn't ask him for this, couldn't let him give it, no matter how much here I wanted something like this to happen, he was going to be hokage, and that meant he had to marry a woman of status with a good reputation, at best, I only came from a clan of minor importance, and my reputation was ruined, there wasn't a way to save it, even if Sakura was made to admit her lies, they were too ingrained in the mind of our fellow villagers for them to change their minds about me. Slowly, my heart breaking each second I move, I pushed myself off of Naruto and turned so my back was to him, without looking I could tell he was confused, I squeezed my eyes shut in an attempt to keep myself from shedding even a single tear, I didn't know him that well, this could all be a trap, he could be seriously falling for me, I couldn't let that happen, just a few years ago, I would have welcomed having him as an admirer, or would have once I realized what a great, strong, powerful, mysterious guy he was, but now, I couldn't understand why anyone would want me, I could and would care for Naruto, I would even love him, but I couldn't let him feel the same way about me, there was too much that he could, no, would lose if he did, so I swallowed the lump in my throat and turned my head to regard him over my shoulder, trying to look as much like my old stuck up self as I could, it lasted all of three seconds before I saw the look of rejection of his face, realized that there hadn't ever been a woman to his knowledge that ever wanted to be with him, and the words died on my lips, the lump in my throat came back, I couldn't let him lose his dream because of me, but I couldn't break the heart of my savior, we'd known each other growing up, but I'd never really gotten to know the loudmouth blonde, just like he'd never really known me, but he'd so selflessly given of himself so that I wouldn't suffer any more than I had to, he was the only one in the world who cared about me anymore, what kind of woman would I be if I repaid him so cruelly? I looked down at myself, idly picking at the hem of my purple miniskirt that bared my long legs from mid-thigh down, watched as my breasts made the matching crop top rise and fall with my breath, I knew why he would want me, even as much as I tried to play it down normally, I'd always known I was beautiful, it was what helped the rumors Sakura spread be believed, people didn't like others who were more attractive than them, they might desire them, hold them up as examples, but ultimately they wanted to destroy them, and when that opportunity came, they were like vultures on a carcass, each wanting their own piece of what remained, and, as I looked down at Naruto as he lay there on the grass, upset with my rejection of him, I understood that people were the same with their heroes, they'd praise them, hold them up on their shoulders, and parade them about proclaiming their gratitude, but sooner or later they would turn on them, even before before he took me in, I'd heard people saying things about him that weren't all too pleasant, I knew what it was like to be turned on, and I wasn't going to do that to someone who'd helped me, I don't think I meant to kiss him, or maybe I did, I enjoyed it, a lot, even though I'd been living with Naruto for the past two days, it hadn't really hit me just what being a Sanin meant as far as physical condition, he'd removed his jacket since he'd repped it up in the fight with Kiba, and currently his chest was hidden only by a very tight black shirt that clung to him like a second skin, my hands clenched that shirt as tightly as I could when I felt his teeth start to nibble at my bottom lip, and I whimpered, it was almost more than I could take. It had been close to three years since I lost my virginity, which hadn't been all that spectacular, okay, let's face it, it was horrible, and it had ruined my life, all the passions I felt for the boy I'd given myself to, had never come close to this, I'm not sure when I did it, but when I pulled away from Naruto, breathing harder than if I'd just run 10 miles without a break, I found that I was straddling him and wriggling about with need, I'd never done that before, even when I'd had sex that one time, my head was spinning from more than just the lack of air, I couldn't breathe, I couldn't think, but I could feel everything, every emotion I'd locked away in an attempt to keep from hurting when people shouted their insults or whispered their distaste, every physical pleasure I'd denied myself since that fateful day when I'd given up the most precious thing I'd ever had, once the rumors had started, I'd dressed down, stopped working to be pretty, and gave up almost everything that had made me, well, me, and sitting there, on top of the man who'd been the first to protect me in forever, I felt it all come back, I wanted to be beautiful again, to spend hours making sure every part of my physical appearance was perfect, just so the man I cared about, would pay just a little more attention, so everyone who saw me with him would be jealous and respect him for catching such a beauty and making it his. It wasn't some weird sexual kink, I'd never really been into domination and submission or any of that stuff, but the idea of being Naruto's, of everyone knowing I belonged to him, mind, body, soul, heart, and every other particle of me, 
sent a wave of pleasure and desire and need and hope and despair and guilt and love through me at the speed of light. I looked down into his deep blue eyes and felt like I was floating in the oceans of the land of water. I couldn't be that selfish to make him give up those dreams of hokage for stupid little old me. I couldn't be that selfish to make him give up the chance to throw everything away for a love he'd never known. I couldn't make that decision for him. He had to make it himself. And Naruto, I whimpered, unable to make any sound that wasn't pathetic and full of everything I was feeling. I I, we, we can't do this, I said, tears welling up as I said the words that could, would, break my heart, I can't let you give up everything for me, no one would let you be hokage if you married the town slut, they'd never let that happen. I felt the tears fall down my face, ruining the little makeup I was wearing and making me look all ugly, some women are beautiful when they cry, but I'm not one of them. I turned my face away from him as I released his shirt and sat up, I tried to ignore the feeling of his hard body under me, how it felt to have me kiss him, feel his excitement pressing up against short skirt, I felt him shift as he sat up and clenched my eyes harder, willing him to agree with me, stop right where we were and let me savor it for the rest of my sad life and watch him fulfill his dreams, then he brushed the hair away from my face and forced me to look him in the eye, my hands clenched his shirt, determined to keep him close and push him away, and then he kissed me, soft and long and deep, my eyes fluttered closed as I whimpered, it hurt to be this close to him and know I had to leave him, then his arms wrapped around me and he pulled back slowly lightly, leaving me breathless and about to cry, you can't do this Naruto, I said softly, bowing my head and refusing to meet his eyes, I know how people are, all their petty, vain, empty cruelty, they hate those who are different from them, who they see as better than them because of beauty or wisdom or anything else, I mean hell, people used to look up at me because I was pretty and strong and smart, but look at how they treat me now, all because someone they decided they liked better came along and made them think I was trash, I know you were alone as a kid and that everyone picked on you, yet as cruel as our classmates were when they were children, it doesn't hold a candle to the cruelty they shell out now that they're grown, I looked up at him at his handsome concerned face, and it took everything I had not to break down and beg him to take me and protect me for the rest of our lives, I refused to be that selfish, I forced him to let go of me and stood up, moving away slightly with my back to him, I owe you too much to let them do that to you, Naruto, I said softy, clenching my fists at my side, I was giving up my dream, I was giving up my heart, I would never be Ino Uzumaki, if I had to slap him upside the head a dozen times or break my heart a million, I would never let him give up his dream, I threw my head back and let the sun caress my face, imagining what it would be like to make love to him under this very sky, it would be wonderful, not like my first and only other time, not like that horrible mistake, not like the few moments of almost pleasure that had cost me my virginity, my life, my friends, my family, sex is rarely like it's portrayed, at least not the first time, it was hot and sweaty and messy and embarrassing, when Tenton had told me and the other girls of the rookie nine what it had been like, she claimed it was all candles and romance and soft touches and tender sighs, she'd made it sound glorious and wonderful, and maybe for her, it had been, but it wasn't for me, I'd regretted it almost before it was over, and not because of the pain, it hadn't hurt that much, my lover had tried to be as gentle as he could, but it had been his first time too, and neither of us knew what we were doing other than what we'd been taught by our various teachers, I'd known all sorts of seduction and sex techniques, but I'd forgotten them all by the time we were ready to truly start, it had been clumsy, and neither of us could look at the other the same way ever again, sometimes that's good, that time it wasn't, I don't think I could just have sex anymore, I was more than willing to turn around and make love to Naruto, hell, I wanted to do that more than anything, because, because, because I was falling in love with him like I'd never been in my life, I shivered in the warm air as it struck me, I loved Naruto, but I could never be with him, tears started to stream down my face again as I cried, I think it might have been hard to admit that, but it was harder to lie myself, sex was meaningless to me, fucking and simple animal passion didn't excite me, but the idea of giving myself completely and selflessly to Naruto made my heart beat faster and my body quiver with desire, I refused to let it show, but having him so close to me was unbearable, you know, I heard him call my name as he stood up, the soft sounds of his clothing as they adjusted on his massive frame that dwarfed me, the rustle of cloth as his hands brushed loose blades of grass from his person, I stood frozen, I wanted to run away, I wanted to run to him, I wished my ankle would stop hurting so I could run anywhere, I wished my ankle would give way so I could never leave here, I almost broke when his fingers brushed my shoulder, I came closer when his hands came to rest on my hips, I reached the edge when he drew me close, pressing his heavily muscled chest forged from years of fighting against my small back, I broke apart into a million tiny fragments of Eno when he embraced me and whispered in my ear, Eno, you've given me more of my dream in the last two days than anyone has in my life, my legs gave way, unable to support me, my mind broke apart at his touch, at his words, at the sheer music of his voice, I don't fear the villagers words or deeds, I know of their cruelty as well as you do, 
You say they hate you because you were their idol, the thing they could never be but were forced to desire by their own weak hearts. I know of that hate already, because a part of me is something they fear the most. My very life is a reminder of the fear of the inevitable end they almost were destroyed by. He said softly, and even as I sagged weakly against him I looked up at his fearful, lovely face. W what are you talking about? I asked brilliantly, I do that sometimes, when I'm at my worst, people used to think it was cute, now they just laugh at me for being another dumb blonde. This time it was Naruto who drew away from me, bringing new tears to my eyes at what I thought was going to be his rejection, I steeled myself, better now than after I had completely given myself the hope of something more with my savior. I'm the container for the nine-tailed fox, the Kaiubi that almost destroyed our village and killed the loved ones of so many people. He looked at me sadly and moved like he was going to leave, I understand if you want me to go, there aren't many people who see me as someone other than the Kaiubi, and I understand if I scare you because of what I am, he said, turning his back on me. I watched as he crouched, preparing to leap away into the trees. I don't know where I found the strength or how I pushed aside the pain in my foot that had come rushing back. All I know is that I jumped just as he was about to leave and managed to get my arms around his broad chest. I grabbed my wrists and held on tight, refusing to let go despite his attempts to remove my grip. You know, just let me go, you deserve better than me. He shouted and I felt the same pain in his cry as I felt in my heart. No way in hell, you fucking bastard. I yelled back, burying my face in his shirt, soaking it with fresh tears, you are the greatest thing that has happened to me in years, and you deserve better than me, not the other fucking way around. So if you are going to leave me here then do it by telling me I was right about giving you up, that I wasn't going to sacrifice my happiness for nothing, because you deserve better than me, because you can't have your dream disappear because of me. Not because I deserve better, but because you do. He froze and I tightened my grip on him, till my large breasts were crushed painfully between our bodies, Naruto, you deserve everything you want after what you've gone through, I remember when you lost your Ayasama just after Asuma sensei was killed, I saw how hard it was for you, and I've always cursed myself to not going and talking to you about it, especially after you helped to avenge my sensei, watching you fight the bastard that had helped kill him, was the most impressive thing I'd ever seen. You are the greatest shinobi and the best person I've ever met, I don't care if you have a demon sealed inside you. You are one of the most loving, caring, honorable people I've ever met, and if that is because of what you hold then I'm grateful for it, you deserve to be seen as a hero, not as a monster. We stood there for what felt like hours, neither of us moving, then I felt his hands shift from trying to pry me off to simply holding me there, I didn't look up from where my face was buried in his back, and he didn't turn around to face me, but I could tell as something in him changed, do you really mean that, you know? He asked softly and I nodded into him, I do, Naruto, more than anything in my stupid, fucked up wreck of a life, I replied, so you don't want me to leave? He asked timidly, no, I never want you to leave me. I replied hotly, even knowing what I am? Did you, when you heard what I was supposed to be? No, then you have my answer, I don't want you to leave Naruto, I want you to stay, and let me repay you for all the good you've done me, I want you to let me stay with you, let me take care of you, I'll cook and clean, and make sure that every night you come home knowing that there is someone who is waiting for you that cares very much, I'm never going to become a medic nin at this point thanks to Sakura, and I probably have lost any chance at being a professional shinobi at this point, but I can at least give you a part of your dream, and maybe someday have a chance to live mine, I said softly, and Naruto finally twisted around in my grip and smiled down at me, then he kissed me again, but there wasn't the pain of regret this time, because I knew I wouldn't have to give him up, I was still a hindrance to his dream, with my reputation for being the town slut, but just maybe I could change that, I looped my arms around his strong neck as he gripped my waist and pressed me closer, tears fell from my eyes, but they weren't tears of sorrow, I wouldn't let him proclaim me as anything close to him just yet, but soon, maybe, I'd go see Tsunade tomorrow and get my medical records cleared, that would be a start. Then I stopped thinking as he deepened the kiss. When we broke apart, he picked me up like I was his bride and carried me over to the abandoned picnic basket where he sat down with me on his lap. I snuggled against him, giggling slightly as he pulled out food and took turns feeding both himself and me. When we left here, things would have to go back to the way they had been. But for now I relaxed slightly and felt true pleasure for the first time in what felt like forever. He used chakra to heal my ankle again from where I twisted it getting away from him, in return, I flashed him a lot of my pale legs without seeming to mean to, and made sure I was as pretty and attention drawing as I could be with my bloodshot eyes and tear streaked face, I think it worked, because Naruto cleaned away the signs of my tears as best he could, and he couldn't keep his eyes off of me, I was giddy as he held me close with one hand and devoured the food I'd painstakingly made with the other, 
complimenting my culinary skills every few bites, it was so nice to be appreciated by someone again that I didn't complain when he got food everywhere, in fact, it took all my control to keep from drifting off, as I imagined him licking me clean of all the crumbs and condiments, when he actually did lick some ketchup off of my cheek from the sandwich I was nibbling on, I almost fainted, I might not be that keen on sex for the same of simple pleasure, but I was a young woman who had been either blessed or cursed with an overactive imagination and a libido to match. Hey, don't look at me like that, if you'd had a very emotional day with where you were about to give your hero in an act of selflessness, only to have him turn around and almost do the same thing, then confess at least a part of your feelings, and find out that the man who had started to take over your dreams was willing to make at least something of a life with you, you'd be in the same state I was, but even heaven as to end at some point in time, we'd laid there after we finished eating until the sky started to grow dark, I was resting again Naruto's side, playing with the fabric of his shirt, my head on his shoulder and his arm around my back, glancing up at the sky I sat up slightly, fear pooling in my belly. I looked down at my hero and wondered what would happen when we left this tiny piece of paradise. Naruto, I think we should keep this between us for now. I'm going to try and salvage something of my life before I let everyone know how I feel about you, and I want you to let me at least lose some of my reputation before we decide what we are, I said softly. Thanks for watching.